Okay, so for this video, we're going to go over the structure of DNA and RNA. So this is from Biological Molecules at Module 1. Obviously, these are both nucleic acids. We're going to just focus on structure for this video. So the structure of DNA. So DNA is a nucleic acid. What else can we say about it? It's a polynucleotide, which basically means it's made from many nucleotides. So the nucleotide is the monomer because that's just a single unit, but DNA is a polynucleotide because it's made from many nucleotides. So it's an example of a polymer because it's made from many repeated monomers. Um, from GCSE, you might remember some things about DNA. Maybe if you did triple science, like for example, it has a double helix structure. We have the two sugar phosphate backbones, which you can see here in orange. And between the sugar phosphate backbones, you've got your bases, which form base pairs. And we've also got the names of the bases. Now at GCSE, you got away with just saying A, T, G, and C, but now we're gonna call them adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. You may remember that adenine always pairs with thymine and guanine always pairs with cytosine. So that is what we call the complementary base pair rule. Let's have a look at a single DNA nucleotide. So this is the monomer of DNA. Obviously, DNA is a polynucleotide, as we've just said. But if we go ahead and label this, then B would be the phosphate group. A would be the sugar, but we do need to know the name of it at A level. So because this is a DNA nucleotide, this is deoxyribose sugar. And it's example of a pentose sugar because it does have five carbons. Attached to the deoxyribose sugar, we've got the nitrogenous base because it contains nitrogen. And obviously there are four bases in DNA. So we have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Now you could be asked to label a nucleotide or I've seen them ask students to draw a box around one nucleotide. So remember it has these three component parts and you should be able to name them. In terms of what elements DNA contains, well, it has carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, just like, you know, carbohydrates, lipids, um, amino acids, but it also has nitrogen in the base and it has phosphorus in the phosphate group. So there are five different elements in DNA altogether. If we have a look now at the detailed structure of DNA, which you can see just behind me, you could get an exam question on this. It might be four, five, or even six marks. So let's have a look at the key marking points. First thing, it's a polymer of nucleotides, or even better, if you can say it's a polynucleotide, it's made from many nucleotides. Then we can get a mark for describing what each nucleotide contains. So each nucleotide has the deoxyribose sugar, the phosphate group, and the organic or the nitrogenous base. So this would be the phosphate group, this would be the deoxyribose sugar, and obviously this would be an example of a base. There are phosphodiester bonds between the nucleotides. So for example, here and here, or here and here, these would be phosphodiester bonds. So we've got another bond name to learn. These are strong covalent bonds. They form between the phosphate group and the deoxyribose sugar uh, between the adjacent nucleotides. They form the sugar phosphate backbone of which obviously there are two because DNA is double-stranded. And the bases are protected in the middle between those two sugar phosphate backbones. Now, when we do DNA replication, we'll learn more about exactly how these phosphodiester bonds are formed. And we'll learn about an enzyme called DNA polymerase that is responsible for making these phosphodiester bonds in condensation reactions. But yeah, stay tuned for that because we'll be doing a video on DNA replication very soon because it is in the same module. Next, marking point four, we could get credit for just describing the structure as a double helix, or we could get credit for talking about how the two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds. You can see there are hydrogen bonds between the bases, 
uh, represented with the dotty lines because they are weak intermolecular forces. But three hydrogen bonds form between guanine and cytosine and two hydrogen bonds form between adenine and thymine. And again, that's our complementary base pair rule. There's loads of ways to remember this, like at the golf course or apple trees and ginger cookies. Or some people remember that the A and T go together because they're the letters with the straight lines and the G's and C's go together because they're the curly letters or the letters with the curved lines. Finally, we can actually get a mark just for describing this complementary base pair rule. So adenine and thymine pair together and cytosine and guanine pair together. And yeah, five, five marks available here. So you should be quite confident with this. Um, it is something that you touched on at GCSE. It's just now we're adding in the names of the bonds, such as the phosphodiester bonds, the hydrogen bonds, and we've got the full names of the bases as well. Let's have a look at RNA, RNA structure. Now, RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. And obviously, there are similarities between RNA and DNA. You know, they're both nucleic acids. They're both polynucleotides. Or they're both made from many nucleotides. Um, and there's a lot of similarities in the structure of the nucleotide as well. So if this is an RNA nucleotide, then B, again, would be the phosphate group. A, again, it's a sugar. Again, it's a pento sugar. But because this is ribonucleic acid, this is ribose sugar. But yeah, it still has five carbons. We'll look at the difference on the next slide, I think. We still have the nitrogenous base, except, and this is where one of the differences comes in, um, the bases in RNA are adenine, uracil, guanine and cytosine so instead of thymine we have uracil there's no thymine base in rna it's uracil in place so wherever there's complementary base pairing in rna such as in trna an adenine would pair with the uracil not a thymine so what are the differences then structural differences between an rna nucleotide and a dna nucleotide well obviously the sugar is different so I might just do this in a little table form for us. In DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose sugar. And in RNA, the sugar is ribose sugar. In DNA, we have the base thymine, whereas in RNA, we have the base uracil. Now, if you get asked this question in an exam, make sure to give your answer in a comparative way. So using words such as whereas, can be really useful so it's clear to the examiner exactly what the difference is yeah we're going to look at the difference in the sugar now and um, now if you're aqa biology you don't need to know the structures of deoxyribose sugar and ribose sugar if you're ocr biology though you do have to know the difference so this slide would be useful for you and um, but yeah this is our dna nucleotide here this is our rna nucleotide here you can see the phosphate groups the same. You can see they've both got a base. Obviously, with RNA, we know that there's no thymine. It would be uracil. If we look at the sugar, they look very, very similar on first glance. They're both pento sugars. But the difference is here, if you haven't spotted it already. So on carbon two of the deoxyribose or ribose sugar, the DNA nucleotide, so the deoxyribose sugar, has a hydrogen below carbon two, whereas the ribose sugar has a hydroxyl group or an OH group below carbon two. And that is the only difference between those two sugars. Let's think about the different types of RNA. So you're going to come across messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA. And um, let's start with this one because we don't learn much about ribosomal RNA. But what we should know is ribosomes, which are the site of protein synthesis, either in the cytoplasm or attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
they are made of protein and ribosomal RNA or rRNA for short. So it forms part of the structure of the ribosome. Now, this is something for you to think about, which I always think about when I am considering ribosomes. Ribosomes make protein, but ribosomes are made out of protein. So which came first? It's like the biology chicken or the egg question. Have a little think. We then got messenger RNA. Now, messenger RNA is made during transcription which is the first stage of protein synthesis. Now, we don't actually learn about protein synthesis till module four with AQA, because this module is literally just about structure. But it might be worth just mentioning now, so it makes sense, that the first stage of protein synthesis, which is called transcription, takes place in the nucleus. And what we see during this stage is that a messenger RNA copy is made of one of the strands of DNA that we call the template strand. So the DNA strand separates, one strand acts as a template strand, and the messenger RNA is made as a copy of that strand, and the mRNA can leave the nucleus and go to the ribosomes where it's actually used to provide the code to put the amino acids together in the correct order. Um, yeah, so it the, basically the order of bases on the messenger RNA determines the order of amino acids in the polypeptide. So transfer RNA is also used in proto, uh, protosynthesis. It's also used in protein synthesis. Um, it's used during translation, which is the second stage of protein synthesis. And the second stage of protein synthesis actually happens at the ribosomes, right? So this is where the amino acids actually get joined together to make the polypeptide. And this is actually an amino acid here, this green circle. So the job of a transfer RNA is to carry a specific amino acid to the ribosome. So they actually bring the amino acids to the ribosome and they get joined together in the correct sequence to produce the final polypeptide. But as I said, that's a super simple overview just while we're thinking about these molecules, but you will learn protein synthesis, transcription and translation in module four. You can look forward to that. It's a great topic. Just to finish with then, we're gonna consider the structures of messenger and transfer RNA. We're gonna think of similarities and differences. So let's do similarities first. Obviously they're both RNA. So they're both made of RNA nucleotides. So nucleotides with ribose sugar, nucleotides with uracil instead of thymine. Obviously, they're both polynucleotides, so they're both made of many nucleotides. And the other thing is they are both single-stranded. So unlike DNA, they are not double-stranded. They only have the one sugar phosphate backbone. And you can clearly see that on the messenger RNA. Transfer RNA is a little bit more confusing, but it is just one single strand. It's just folded round on itself, okay? Let's think about the differences then. So if we go through messenger RNA first, messenger RNA is linear. You can see in the picture, it's just a straight chain of nucleotides. Because it's linear, it means there's no hydrogen bonds or no complementary base pairs. Because it is just single stranded and it's linear or straight, so there's no hydrogen bonds forming, there are no complementary base pairs. The other thing, it is longer than tRNA, or you could say it contains more nucleotides. Because the mRNA will be the same length as the gene that it's a copy of. So if that original gene or that original section of DNA had a thousand nucleotides, 
then the mRNA copy will also have a thousand nucleotides. Now, obviously, it's going to vary in length, but it is going to always be longer than a transfer RNA. So longer than transfer RNA or contains more nucleotides. Also variable length or variable number of nucleotides because it depends on the length of the gene that it was made to be a copy of. What else can we say? Ooh, thought of something else. mRNA has codons. So a set of three bases on mRNA is called a codon. And obviously three bases is the code for one amino acid, but these three bases on mRNA are called codons. So we can say mRNA has codons. Let's go to our transfer RNA and see if we can get our differences. I'll try and do them in the same order. So transfer RNA is folded, not linear, or we can describe it as a clover leaf shape. That doesn't sound very scientific, but that is the correct term and it will get you marks. So it is folded. Remember, it is just still one single strand, but it's folded around on itself rather than being linear. Because it's folded, it does have hydrogen bonds or it does have complementary base pairs. And that's what holds this clover leaf shape together. So where the strand kind of folds back on itself and where it's in close contact, for example, if there's bases here and bases here, you will get complementary base pairing. And then between the bases here and the bases here, you will get some complementary base pairing and some hydrogen bonds. Um, it's shorter than mRNA and it has a standard length. So all transfer RNAs are about 80 to 85 nucleotides long. So they're always going to be shorter than mRNA, but they do have that standard length. So the length is not variable like it is for mRNA. Uh, tRNA has an anticodon, which is here. Now the anticodon is a set of three exposed bases at the bottom of the transfer RNA. And that anticodon is actually going to bind to a complementary codon on messenger RNA during translation. Again, we'll do this when we do protein synthesis, but if this is my mRNA and this is my tRNA, the anticodon, which is three bases, can bind to a complementary codon on the mRNA. And obviously the tRNA is also carrying an amino acid. So it's binding to the anticodon, sorry, anticodon is binding to codon and it's bringing with it a specific amino acid. That brings us to our final difference. tRNA has an amino acid binding site. Obviously mRNA doesn't, it would be up here. You can see the little green circle is the amino acid. So where it binds, we call it an amino acid binding site. And obviously transfer RNAs are specific. They can't just carry any old amino acid. Each type of transfer RNA will carry one specific amino acid and it will bind to that binding site, which messenger RNA doesn't have. Now, I hope you have found this video useful. It was a quick whistle stop tour through DNA RNA structure, but we are gonna be posting lots more on this topic over on my Laura Does Biology TikTok account. So if you wanna look at loads of exam style questions going all the way through from easiest to hardest question, you can join me over there to do some exam practice. Make sure you're subscribed because as I've said before, we're gonna post videos like this every week and switch on your notifications so that you can get notified of my live each week. The other thing which is new is that you can subscribe to get my newsletter and in the newsletter you can get access to free study notes, you can get access to loads of exam style questions, loads of video walkthroughs, it's going to be super useful for your revision.